So you have or you're getting a great blow dryer. You've mastered the art of heat protection and stretched your crown. Now I'm gonna show you how I keep my scalp clean and my hair smooth and extra lubricated for a whole month. I use a technique that I used to refer to as scrunching and preening, but you'll see in a bit that scooping and spreading describes it way better for natural hair. Following the same approach I use when I'm blowing out my hair, I imagine it as three sections, the roots, middle, and ends. Scooping and spreading is all about technique. Think to yourself that sebum is the best hair product you ever had, but it's trapped on your scalp. And you're using your fingers to scoop it and spread it down so it can coat your hair. Below is a link to a video I posted on the science of sebum. Before I go over my regimen for the whole month, let me go over quick instructions on how to scoop and spread. Starting with your roots, use your fingers to massage and warm up your scalp so the sebum loosens up and slides out easier. Then use the base of your nails or the tips of your fingers to scoop the sebum up. If your nails are long and sharp like mine, take extra effort not to accidentally scratch your scalp. You're not using the tips of your nails. You're using the base and sliding it along your scalp to scoop up sebum. You don't really even need to touch your scalp because a lot of the sebum is sitting on the first centimeter or two of new growth. After scooping, spread the sebum down. Sebum is thick, so it's not gonna coat your length in one session. With each session, you're spreading it down little by little and scooping up more to make the coverage thicker and thicker. Full coverage is a gradual process that takes consistency. Fun fact! Did you know African Americans not only produce the highest quality sebum, we also produce more of it and a lot thicker. So if we find a way to tap into that, we won't need to use anywhere as much products as we currently do. So, I washed, treated, and blew out my hair on October 17th, and didn't scoop and spread until October 27th. I shouldn't have waited this long and paid for it with some knots. After blowing out my hair, I usually scoop and spread before my hair gets dry. There's no set number of days, everyone is different. To find yours, wash, treat, and blow out your hair, Check it every day to see if it's still flexible and moisturized. Take note of the day it feels dry and go back one day. That's the day that you should scoop and spread because you want to stay ahead of the dryness. For me, I should have scooped and spread on the 22nd to avoid problems. For the first session, there's not that much sebum built up, so you're going to need the assistance of some products. After massaging your scalp, Use a water-based spritz with an acetic pH to break up and help further loosen up the dried sebum on your scalp so you can scoop up as much sebum as possible. There's not that much sebum to work with yet, so focus on spreading it down the first inch or so and use an organic oil to help slide it down even more. This technique is also really good for safely removing shed hair. It just slides out without me even having to disturb my ends at all. This is the first session, so my ends are drier than usual. They're fragile and uncoated. So I use the spritz to loosen it up and the oil to protect it, so I can feel for knots and remove more shed hair without causing breakage. You want your hair to stay stretched, so only use a small amount of spritz so your ends don't shrink up and cause single strand knots. With this regimen, I don't use combs or brushes, so this is my current level of detangling. With some sebum coverage and help from products, my hair definitely looks and feels better. I did my second scoop and spread session on November 1st. Just as an FYI, this is what I look like from day to day. My hair is usually up in a very, very, very loose bun or ponytail. 
unless I'm going out out or doing something on camera, I avoid putting any type of tension on my scalp. So rather than forcing the hairs along my edges into buns and ponytails, I usually just leave them out. Okay, back to my second scoop and spread session. A session usually takes me about an hour or so to do. I put my hair into sections so I can keep track and if I have to stop and do the rest tomorrow, I know where I left off. I didn't wait too long this time so my hair didn't dry out. As you can see, it's still pretty moisturized and lubricated. From the first session, there's a thin coat of sebum on my roots. So my goal is to scoop up more sebum from my scalp, thicken up the coat on my roots, and spread more down the length of my hair. So it still needs some assistance from products to help loosen it up and slide it down, especially in the middle section. As you can see, I only focus on one section at a time. From my experience, it's the best way to remove shed hair without messing with your ends. My ends don't feel dry and they're still stretched, so I'm gonna fluff it out a little bit to check for knots and remove the last pieces of shed hair and let it be. Visually, there's no huge difference between the first session and the second session, but my hair feels a lot softer. Stay tuned to the next video so you can see how my hair turned out after the fourth session. I'm also going to go over some extra tips and answer some questions you may be thinking. As an FYI, I post hair updates every month on my Instagram page, at Green Beauty Channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.